Yeah, they can clap. Uh, so, don't forget to clap, please. Anyway, I'd like to welcome you to today's performance of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Or is it tonight? Today? No clue. It's summer. I have no idea. <laughs> Anyways, as most of your kids have told you, this is a Midsummer Night's Dream. And room 19, Miss Blue's sixth grade class, would really like to present this to you. Please, if you could, quiet yourself out and refrain from talking. Room 19 has worked really hard on this. We would love to show this its full glory. And a ringing cell phone probably will not help. They have a really great product. And they would love to show this to you. But before these curtains open and the screen rises and all whatever magic they have back there breaks loose, the stage group, otherwise known as the extras group, has an informative video for everyone to help understand the show. I hope it makes you understand. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, I don't know what people are thinking. So, without further ado, a midsummer night's dream.
Your father wishes to entreat you, to allow him to invoke the law of Athens upon her, to force her to his will. Ah, uh, difficult affair. Bring them in. Hello, my lord. Happy be Theseus. Very now do. Thanks, Felicius. What is it? Full of vexation, come Complaints against my child, my daughter, her. Stand forth, Demetrius, my noble lord. This man hath my consent to marry. Stand forth, lie, Senator. And, my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turning her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. Being so, she will not hear before your grace, consent to marry with Demetrius. Therefore, I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her. It shall be either to this gentleman or to her death. So will I die, my lord, or will I yield to his lordship? <laughs> Take time to pause. By the next moon, see one day betwixt my love and me. I will prepare to die, disobedience your father's will. But what Demetrius, as he would, relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scornful, Lysander. True, he hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render me. And she is mine. My lord, I am beloved of beauty as Hermia. Demetrius, I'll vouch it to his head. Made love to Neter's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. Now she, sweet dick lady, goes upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess that I have heard so much. But Demetrius, thou hast spoken now. But come, Demetrius, and come, Demetrius. I have some private business that consumes you both. For you, for Hermia, take you on yourself. For your fancies, to your father's will. The law of Athens yields you up to death. Come, my father, and cheer my father. Demetrius, Demetrius, go along. With duty and desire we follow. I me, mean, the course of true love never did run smooth. This moment as a sound, swift as a shadow, short as any dream, brief as the lightning. Ere man hath power to say, behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. Then let us teach our child patience. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow in a dowager, of a great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house from about seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. Then, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee, and to that place the Sarpathian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then, 